you love farmhouse decor, then you're definitely not going to want to miss this video because I have several scrap wood farmhouse decor DIYs for you. And I would also like to thank Glowforge for sponsoring today's video. Okay, friends, so I just wanted to show you, I already had a few of these pieces. If you see the 1 4th 2 by 4 blonde wood, I already had some of those. My husband is a handyman, but I did just want to show you the section that you can grab them if you don't already have these pieces. Now, I really like these because they're already sanded down smooth for you, ready to go, and all I did was just use my DeWalt saw linked in my Amazon shop down into four. So once I cut it down into four I take one of the pieces and I give that a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint once I was done painting it then of course y'all know if you've been around for any time you know I'm impatient so I dried it with my blow dryer and then I took the new Dollar Tree 2024 calendars I chose the image that I liked which is this one with the little cow on it and then to make this look rustic and as if it blended in with the wood I went ahead and took the edges and just kind of pulled them so that they looked roughed up and I did do this all the way around this piece of paper or image. Now do as I say, not as I do, because I first started to glue this calendar and, and I did glue it with a disappearing purple glue stick and then I realized that I skipped a step. Sometimes I work backwards, it just is what it is, it's my process and I realized, oh crap, I should have done this, done this first. So I took a large chip brush from Home Depot and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and I dry brush all the way around my board. I made sure that that was completely dry and then I went ahead and added my calendar to this board right into the middle. Now because I had glued this first and then dry brushed on my piece, the edges were a little bit dry so all I did was just take my glue stick once again and glue down those edges that were coming up. Next, I'm going to take another piece of scrap wood that I had in my stash. I laid my sign on it, I marked it, and then cut that down with my miter shears. And all you have to do is just um, like try to cut it on one side, flip it, cut it on the other, and then it will cut really nicely with the shears. Unfortunately, it does not cut in one slice, but if you do it a few times, then you're golden. So once I had that cut and I sanded down the edge, then I went ahead and stained that as well with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, and once again, dried that. I then took this small dowel rod, square dowel rod that I had in my stash once again. Y'all, I am i don't know about you. Let me know in the comments, but do you guys save all the pieces like if you use another piece? I save all these pieces because as you can see, you never know when you're going to need it. But I do go ahead and glue that to the bottom of my board. That way, when I glue this to the scrap piece of wood, then I have something more to glue to. So before I go ahead and glue that down, I'm gonna take some greenery from Walmart and I just kind of arrange it the way that I like it first to make sure that it is placed correctly. And then I go ahead and glue that down on either side. Once I had my greenery glued down, I went ahead and made a simple bow out of this new ribbon that I absolutely love. I got this from Hobby Lobby and I just made a simple bow and glued that down in between the greenery and then I glued the board to my scrap wood. And then that was it for DIY number one. So simple, so easy, but I absolutely adore the way that this turned out. That greenery with the ribbon, oh my goodness, and the image. I don't know about you, but I can't even tell that that is a Dollar Tree calendar. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one. If 
if you guys are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out. Subscribe if you haven't already become part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss any DIYs coming up for the holiday season. With that being said, let's jump back into today's video. So I recently just had the pleasure of helping Glowforge launch this amazing crafting laser machine. And because I have used it several times, I wanted to show you guys so that way you don't run across this issue. So if your machine starts to cut wonky and it's just not cutting right, I was so worried that I did something wrong to my machine or you know whatever the case may be. And it is such a simple fix. All you have to do is take a lint-free cloth and some 90% isopropyl alcohol and you're just going to wipe the entire inside of your machine. You want to take that crumb tray out, make sure that it is completely free of all debris on the top of the crumb tray as well as at the bottom and you just want to make sure that everything is nice and squeaky clean but the biggest part of this i want to stress to you guys the biggest part is to make sure that those two bars that your laser is sitting on is nice and clean as well because just a tiny bit of buildup can mess up your design and I don't want you guys to go through what I went through like I said. So I just wanted to show you how easy this is to clean up. It is amazing how clean it cuts once you clean it. So I would even make sure that you do this every few cuts just to ensure that you don't waste any material and that your machine cuts to its best ability. Um, but you also want to be very careful with that with the two bars that your laser sits on. Um, so you want to always make sure that you are moving it back and forth with two hands. Um, like you see me here, I started to do it with one hand and then I was like, oh crap, let me do it with two, the way that the instructions say to do. And then once I was completely done, look how dirty it becomes just from all of the fumes from your wood. So this is just a really good practice to have in your back pocket to make sure that you are running correctly every single time. So if you know nothing about the new Glowforge Aura, I wanted to tell you guys how amazing this thing is. It is so simple to set up and use. It's only 19 pounds, so it's perfect for a craft room. It has a live print preview. It, when I tell you it's the perfect crafting companion, I'm telling you this thing is very small. So compared to the other machines, it fits perfectly in my craft room before I just didn't have a have the room for a bigger one. It also cuts depths up to one fourth inches. It cuts a variety of materials such as wood, leather, acrylic, paper, and even iron on vinyl. Like how amazing is that? It also engraves photos on any material and it brings your creative ideas to life in minutes. So I am going to go back to the Glowforge app and I'm going to start a new design. Now I cannot stress to you enough how important it is when you start a new design to go in the left hand corner where you see the little Glowforge logo. You want to click that. Then I'm going to go up to dashboard. I'm going to go to my designs and I'm going to select the design that I want to cut. Now I had to do this after I was done cutting because I forgot to screen record doing this particular project. But if you need to resize it, all you do is just select the entire image, size it down to your piece of wood. Since the Glowforge takes a picture of inside of the machine in the app, that way you can see where your cut is going to be in the machine and then you go ahead and click print and then the machine will calibrate and once the machine is ready the button on the machine will illuminate you just press that and your machine will go ahead and cut or engrave whatever it is that you're doing so once my project was completely done engraving and cutting i went ahead and popped those out and then for the piece i gave it a distress coat of my white waverly chalk paint doing my best to leave those lines visible i also 
dry brush the edges with some white Waverly chalk paint as well and then let that dry. For the frame as well as the farm animals, I did give those a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and once again let that dry really well. Now I did want to go ahead and mention when you pop your wooden pieces out I do recommend to be extremely careful just because this is thinner wood and it can break pretty easily if you're not careful so I learned that the hard way um, and I did just want to mention that to you guys. So once I was completely done staining my pieces then of course surprise surprise I go ahead and dry brush some white Waverly chalk paint all the way around my frame as well as on my little animal pieces. As always, you guys know my motto. If you have been around for any length of time, if not welcome, I'm so happy you're here. I would love for you to subscribe and share this out. It really helps my channel. But anyway, y'all know my motto if you've been around. If you do not like dry brushing, totally just skip this step and you can leave it plain wood. Next, I'm going to glue this together with some super glue. All you need is just a few dabs. So I just dab my super glue all the way around the frame. I position that on the bottom piece and then to make sure that this is not going to go anywhere while that super glue is drying, I do go ahead and clamp all four corners. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the little animal pieces. However, obviously, I don't clamp those down. I just let them dry really well before moving on to the next step. Next, I just made a simple bow using Dollar Tree ribbon with the little farm animals and the barn on it. I thought that it was so cute and I went ahead and glued that down to the left hand corner. And that was it for this project, you guys. Look how gorgeous this turned out. I absolutely love it. It goes perfectly with my farmhouse decor and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of DIY number two down below in the comment section. Okay friends, for the last and final DIY, I am going to take this scrap piece of wood. Y'all, my husband is a handyman, so the amount of scrap wood that we have, nice pieces, not so nice pieces, you name it, we have it. So I just kind of dug in his stash and grabbed this piece. I had this little jar that one of you guys actually gave me a few of these. So I just laid one at the top of the board to see how big of a piece that I needed for a shelf. I marked that at the top and the bottom and then in the middle piece, I just measured that halfway. So the smaller pieces are four inches and then the bigger pieces are 15 and a half pieces. And you can get your local hardware store to cut these down for you. You just need one piece and then have them cut it down into four and then I go ahead and I stain that with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. I also forgot to mention that I did cut them with my DeWalt saw and all of the supplies, anything that I can link in my Amazon shop for you guys will be linked in the description box as well as the pinned comment for you guys. That way, if there is an item you're looking for, always check my Amazon shop first before you leave a comment and ask because nine out of 10 times, all of it is in the description box or pinned comment for you. So once I was completely, or I should say, once my pieces were completely dry, then I went ahead and dry brushed with my white Waverly chalk paint to make this look old and weathered. Next, I'm gonna lay my jar back down on my piece of wood to see where I want my shelves to be. And then when I was satisfied with the placement, I did just go ahead and glue these down with some wood glue. Now, if you want these to be a little bit more sturdy, you can screw them from the back. However, I knew that I was only gonna put a little bit of greenery in my jars and I really didn't have to worry about 
a lot of weight being on my shelves so that's why I opted for some wood glue but if you're worried that it's that your piece is going to be too heavy go ahead and screw that from the back so I set those aside to dry and then I'm going to take my jars and that ribbon that we used in the first DIY. I cut two pieces and I just glued those around the top of my bottles. And then y'all, that was it. I cannot wait to see what you guys think of DIY number three. I think they turned out absolutely stunning. And y'all, this project literally took me probably 30 minutes. It took no time at all. And it's a super beginner friendly, super easy DIY. So I believe any of you guys can do it because y'all know me. I always tell you that you can do anything you set your mind to. Sometimes things seem way out of reach when they're really not so never doubt yourself always believe in yourself because I promise you if you set your mind to it you can do anything so with that being said thank you guys so much for sticking around thank you for hanging out with me today I also would like to thank Glowforge for sponsoring today's video and if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous you can do anything you set your mind to coming from an addict who is nine years sober if I I can do it. I know that you can do it as well. Don't forget to share this out. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. I love y'all. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload, or join the DIY fam here to your right.